Just not everything that we've done has necessarily made the viewer comfortable. That's okay. And in fact, that's actually one of my goals for the show. Hey, it's Dallas. Time for another vlog. Thank you so much for joining me. And I'm gonna get right into it because today is a little bit different. Today's maybe a little bit more personal. Uh, it's less of an update than it is a, I don't know, call to action maybe a little bit. I got a recent note on Facebook from someone who was very sincere. They were expressing their discomfort with the end of season one. They loved the show. Their family had been watching the show all together. I think she described her family as more traditional, maybe old school. They loved the show up until the ending. And if you remember, the end of season one is Jesus is talking to the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. And after their exchange, they have this really emotional exchange and the disciples show up and then Jesus and the disciples have an exchange and then they leave. And as they're walking away, this really kind of kicked butt music comes in. Yes! <laughs> Song, original song called Trouble that uh, we wrote, our composers Dan and Matt wrote uh, specifically for that scene. And the lyrics are pretty aggressive, you know, it's, it's uh, the lyrics, one of the lyrics is, trouble's gonna find you here. It's about how Jesus and the disciples are in some ways kind of troublemakers and they're about to go out and start a little bit of trouble. And the style of music is, you know, it's kind of old school, southern gospel funk rock meets slave spiritual, you know, kind of similar to our opening credits music. And she said it was really a turnoff for her and her family. And they were kind of uncomfortable with it because she felt like it wasn't very respectful. It lacked a little bit of the reverence for Christ. And she even thought that it didn't quite fit the tone of the show and mentioned that they really liked the music that would take place during some of the more emotional scenes. And it really got me thinking about what exactly The Chosen is about and what it's for and who it's for and what its purpose is. What I realized, even though I'd thought about it and I kind of understood it, but I hadn't put it in these words, is that The Chosen isn't supposed to make you comfortable. It hasn't made me comfortable necessarily. When I do the research for the show, when I dig into the Gospels, the process of making this show overall has been quite a slog. I've rarely been comfortable. Some of the truths that Jesus spoke in the Gospels haven't always been comfortable. They don't, they aren't necessarily the easiest to follow. And I've had to, in many ways, through making this show and in researching this show, I've had to, as it says on my shirt here, get used to different. This is our latest shirt. It's one of our official shirts. It's a line from episode seven when Jesus is talking to Simon and he says, get used to different. And I realized, I think this is a motto, not only for us as we've been creating the show and creating the means to watch the show with the app and to pay it forward and all that. This is also kind of a call to action to the viewers. And and to when you watch this show, sometimes you have to get used to different a little bit. That's okay. It made me realize when I think of all of the things that we've heard from people, even people who love the show, some of the things that we've heard that they don't love or that have made them uncomfortable, whether it's the music at the end of season one or whether it's the opening credits music. I remember when we first released the first four episodes, I got a few notes, including from some of our investors who loved the show and hated the opening credits. Whether it was the design, whether it was the music, they just thought it didn't, again, they use that term, it doesn't fit the tone of the show. We've also gotten occasional criticism for other things. You know, it's been the minority, but it's still been present. Some of the ways that we've shown Jesus, showing Jesus winking in episode two, for example, showing him dressing a wound, showing him getting tired, showing him telling jokes. There's a joke in episode five that some people weren't comfortable with when Simon asks him if, if he can help Andrew's dancing and he says, some things even I cannot do. And we've had some people say, hey, that's not what Jesus would say because he can do anything. We had several people when we first showed episode one who were uncomfortable with our portrayal of Simon and Matthew, for example. Some of the feedback we got when we were testing episode one, they were saying, I don't like Simon or I don't like Matthew. <laughs> Plenty of things throughout these episodes that just didn't make the viewer comfortable. Especially one of the biggest things is I think some people get a little uncomfortable just by the fact that we are adding backstories and historical and cultural context to the gospel stories. And anytime that you're dancing outside of scripture when you're portraying Jesus and the disciples, it's a really risky proposition and it requires a lot of care. It's very important to get it right. Just not everything that we've done has necessarily made the viewer comfortable. That's okay. And in fact, that's actually one of my goals for the show. Now, why is that? Why would I want to do something intentionally to make someone uncomfortable? I don't necessarily set out saying, I'm going to on purpose do something just for the sake of making someone uncomfortable. 
that's not really accurate. It's more like I'm going to really not be afraid to do things that are different and that may jolt the viewer out of your comfort zone so that maybe the show can feel different than other shows that you've watched before, especially shows about Christ or, or about the Bible. Many times I have been forced to deal with something that made me uncomfortable and jolted me out of my routine, jolted me out of sometimes the sleepiness that we can get into when it comes to our faith, where we're so used to tradition, we're so used to our own patterns, we're so used to our own preferences, that when we hear something or see something that is different than what we expected, or different than what we prefer, it's a bit of a jolt. And that's exactly what I believe Jesus was all about. Jesus upset the apple cart. And when he came to earth, and when he was dealing especially with the Pharisees, but not just the religious leaders. A lot of times it's easy for us to criticize the religious leaders because he was always slamming them, but it was the people as well. Because a lot of times the people loved many of the religious leaders, and the religious leaders weren't the villains we sometimes, they weren't always, and weren't all the villains that we make them out to be. A lot of times they were being very sincere and believing that what they were doing was absolutely correct and absolutely what God wanted them to do and absolutely a faithful rendering of the scriptures that they've been reading their whole lives. And Jesus came along and said, yeah, you know what, you're, you're wrong in many of the things that you're doing. And in fact, some of the things that were right at the time, I am now actually going to shift your expectations. And the time for those things is no longer current. That the time for those things was maybe in the past. And they were good, but now I'm bringing a new thing. You know, Isaiah 43, 19 even says, even in the Old Testament, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Do you not perceive it? With this show, I want you to occasionally be watching and go, huh, that doesn't feel normal. I'm not afraid of that, and I'm not afraid of you experiencing that. And what here's what happens is a lot of times we've had people who've said, why did you do that? That's not in the Bible. We'll say, actually, yes, it is. And then they'll go and check and go, oh my goodness, this is something I didn't remember, or this is something that I didn't realize was there. And that's happened to me quite a few times when we've been reading and researching. I've seen many things in the Bible that I, I, I mean, I've been a Bible believer my whole life. I went to a Bible school. I was a Bible major in college. And Every day that I've been researching on this show, I've seen something that I didn't remember or that was different than what I thought. And every time it jolts me a little bit and every time it's a good thing. These, there's kind of a, a list of things that I want you to consider when you see something that you're uncomfortable with in the show. Number one is make sure that you're correct before you go online and, and say that's wrong. We've had several people say, why are you portraying Mary as having been possessed by demons? That's not right. And then of course they look at it and realize that, oh gosh, Mary Magdalene was possessed by seven demons. Okay, they had forgotten that. But just, I think that's a good rule of thumb, whether it's with this show or just in general in life, is before you criticize or point out something that you think is wrong, just make sure you're right first. And because sometimes you're not, and that's very much true of me. And so maybe just take a moment. Also, sometimes maybe take a moment to realize that maybe what you're feeling is an opinion and not a fact. There are lots of different interpretations of scripture and lots of different understandings of some of the things that are said there. Maybe you think that you're right about it, but maybe it's an opinion and maybe it's not a fact, or maybe it's not a major issue and maybe it's just a minor issue. We see this all the time. We've got people of multiple faiths and faith traditions involved in the show. We've got obviously dozens of faith traditions who are watching the show and we'll see sometimes online the arguments. And sometimes I just want to say, this is not a vital point. Or I want to say, you know what? You're both right. You know, you're looking at this just maybe from different perspectives, but this isn't a fact. This is an opinion and this, or this is a tradition. So just take a step back and make sure you're right first, or at least make sure that it's something that's really important. Because obviously some things are important before you go online and talk about it. The second thing is, is that make sure that you also recognize that sometimes the very things that make you uncomfortable are actually the very things that are drawing some people to the show. In fact, when it comes to, for example, the music, one of the things that I said to this woman who was uh, expressing her discomfort with the closing music of season one, I said, here's what's interesting about what you're saying is that the majority of people, that music, that style of music, including the style of music of the opening credits, is exactly one of the reasons why they love the show so much. That it is different. That it does show a side of Jesus and a side of this story that we don't often explore and don't often appreciate when we're in a reverent church service, for example, or when we're watching a movie or project about Jesus in which he's a little bit more solemn. And I think it's a good thing to sometimes recognize that Jesus not only was serious and not only was funny and not only was emotional and not only did beautiful things that required the kind of music that maybe you hear in the scene with Jesus and Nicodemus. It's a little bit more emotional. But Jesus also stirred things up a little bit. Jesus was also a bit of a kick butt guy. And Jesus and the disciples and Jesus and his followers when they're walking, I think sometimes it's kind of cool to imagine them almost like superheroes at times, but at least the very least just even just like regular humans, but who were a little bit of a source of trouble for a lot of people. And 
the the opportunity to see them walking in slow motion and with this music just kind of kicking behind him, that's something that's actually really exciting. And some people may find it irreverent, but I don't think Jesus always necessarily aroused reverence. I think there were many times when Jesus was with his followers or by himself or with his mother where he was not actually walking around as though he was the Son of God. Of course he was, but I don't think it always felt like that. Sometimes it felt like he was the Son of Man, a normal guy. And the answer is yes, he was all of those things. And so when someone says to me, well, that doesn't reflect the tone of the show, I always kind of chuckle and I say, well, the tone of the show is defined by what you see. The opening credits music. Of course it's the tone of the show because it's one of the first things you see and I'm, ex I'm, I'm actually telling you what the tone of the show is. That this is an aggressive show. It's raw. It's authentic. It's pain mixed with hope. That's what the lyrics are of the opening credit sequence. And throughout the show, you'll see different sides of the music, different sides of the humanity, and different sides of Jesus. And all of those are part of the whole. And they don't contradict each other. They actually support each other and, in my opinion, enhance the story itself because we see different sides. Many things that have made might have made you uncomfortable. Again, I remember several people were saying they didn't know if they liked it that Jesus was winking in, in episode two. And in fact, we get 10 to 1, to, or maybe even 100 to 1, notes from people saying that Je seeing Jesus wink or seeing Jesus laugh or seeing Jesus tell that joke in episode five about his own divinity was the very thing that made them love the show even more and drew them even closer to Christ. And so just make sure that you recognize that some of the things that might make you uncomfortable are the very things that draw people to the show and that that's a good thing. And then finally, I think we want to recognize that being uncomfortable is exactly what Jesus oftentimes wants for us. Many times throughout the Gospels, he said, you have heard this, but I tell you this. Or you may think this, but I want you to think this. I'm, of course, not Jesus, and I'm, of course, not God. Very, very far from it. But I oftentimes am trying to be like, more like Jesus. And sometimes that means getting out of my own comfort zone and portraying something that maybe is different from what I had expected and certainly maybe different from what you expected. Every day, we get dozens and dozens dozens and dozens of notes, whether it's on social media or through email or on the app through the Pay It Forward program with people giving thank you notes, from people explicitly telling us that the show has brought them closer to the scriptures, the show has brought them closer to Jesus, and that they're seeing a Jesus that they weren't told about when they were growing up. A Jesus that they didn't even really know existed. A Jesus who has a side, who has multiple sides of him that aren't always portrayed. And so just remember that sometimes things that make you uncomfortable are doing it for a reason. And that many times it's the thing that we need to get us out of our rut and out of our routine. And that's what I hope that this show can do. And I hope that this show will continue to do this around the world is upset the apple cart a little bit. That it will be different and that you and I can get used to different because I think that's what Jesus had his followers do. So if you appreciate that, if you like this video, please hit that subscribe button or that notification bell right underneath the video. It's how you can be aware and be notified whenever we have a new video, but it's also, again, how we increase engagement. And doing that allows uh, YouTube to get these videos in, in, in front of more people. So thank you for joining me again for this vlog. I will see you soon. In the meantime, get used to different and also realize that it's not your job to feed the 5,000. It's only to provide the loaves and fish.